This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at uh, Ayonti Dal, and behind me here you see the poor man's Mercedes. So, this is uh, EQE, pretty stripped down EQE. Uh, one thing I'll show you, by the way, is that um, here, Nokian Hakapolita. Wait, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There. Nuke and Hockerblitter R5. So we have vintage tires on already, okay. You see here, silent drive. Hmm. And do we have staggered 255, 45, 90? No, I think that's the same in the rear. Let me check. Uh, thing 255, yeah, so the same. But this actually makes the car really, really silent because we have winter tires and they are soft and we also have the acoustic foam inside. So, um, but yeah, I mentioned this is the poor man's Mercedes because it is kind of stripped for equipment. Okay, actually this one costs extra. The paint costs extra. Uh, it's not totally stripped down, but uh, it's the EQE 300. We have, but yeah, this is rear wheel drive, EQE. Uh, it's kind of the lowest power, lowest trim, lowest power pretty much. Um, what else do we have here? Let me just check this one. <sighs> Right. And in the back, and we will still have some equipment like leather seats. Yeah. And also Burmester. But then in the front, you will see that we just have this tiny screen, not the Okay. Not that uh, hyper screen. And also, uh, well, okay, at least we have electric adjustable seats, but only heater, not ventilation. And also, I was looking uh, here in the menu, in the comfort, wait. Okay, if we go to comfort, I was looking for the, the adjustment for the side bolsters. They are not here. So, <laughs> and I, I'm not sure what else is missing on this car, but this car is actually, it costs 600 and, um, no, no, 765k nook. So you can actually spec a Mercedes EQ to be around 600 something nook. So um, 600,000 nook, I mean. So yes, uh, the, the, what we're gonna do today is to fire up the car. Okay, all the stuff comes there. I'm going to measure the consumption and see how good the range is because it's supposed to have pretty good range, but actually practically it doesn't seem like it's that great. Maybe it's a lack of heat pump and it's getting cold nowadays. But okay, it's at least eight degrees Celsius. We have sunny weather. We're gonna do the range test. We drive to the north all the way and then back again and measure the consumption and distance error. So yes, I'm topping up now. Let's unplug and go. What the heck? I was gonna plug in the USB here. I read about this. There is no USB-C here in the middle armrest. So that is paid extra. Let me, let me check. Okay, at least we have blinkers. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. We are on the move, so we have to cruise at around 125 kilometers per hour. Yeah, you see, that's 120 on GPS. So because this is a poor man's Mercedes, then we get some uh, uh, high pitch whistle noise here from the A-pillar uh, when going at these speeds. We have a slight uh, headwind, but yeah, this is this is what you get, man. If you go for the lower lower uh, trim of the poor man's Mercedes, you get uh, extra noise that you don't get in the more expensive Mercedes. And also, I also heard some rattling from this side. I haven't been able to figure out where it is. But normally, I, I you know I used to drive a Tesla a lot, so normally I just slap on the dashboard and then the rattle disappears for a little while and then it comes back again. <laughs> But wow, it is so quiet. It is mainly because of the Nokia and Hakablita R5 tires. But of course, the EQE itself is already very, very quiet. So, okay, even if you go for the stripped down version, you still have good soundproofing overall in the car, but maybe, let me check here. Ah, okay. This one does not have the double glazed window, but still, uh, okay. Well, well, maybe that's why I can hear the wind. Nah, nah. Must be, must be something wrong with the press car. Yeah. But yeah, really pleasant to drive. But I advise you, Norwegian, Nisse, don't drive around with uh, winter tires during summer. They are not, they are not Helostak, all right? These are winter tires supposed to be used in winter. In summer, you're supposed to use summer tires. I will do an acceleration, braking and noise test, and I will show you how shitty these tires break now, even during fall. 
but okay now let's check the weight of the car okay front axle 1160 wait no 1200 oh okay okay the whole car this should be lighter than the yeah wow wait huh okay no well <laughs> roughly 150 kilograms lighter than the all-wheel drive versions well that's good Oh, and Mjösa today is windy, you see here? We even have some white over there. But it usually, uh, well, it has the strongest wind usually around Minnesun. So I can show the windsock. You know how to read the windsock? Uh, the windsock, well, it's supposed to have some circles. And then based on how many circles are erected, then you see the wind speed. Well, okay, so uh, the consumption right now is... Well, I have to increase my speed there. Uh, 250 watt hour per kilometer hmm, with a headwind Ooh. but you know what the EQE is actually less efficient than the EQS because it has higher drag coefficient let's well, check something here do we have any do we have any fancy schmancy uh, information here no nope. also this is this is all you get man uh, no rear wheel steering just one motor uh not much information no information about uh, battery temperature okay we have a little bit of stuff here okay that's good at least but also in the instrument cluster here uh there is no information about uh about the motor temperature battery temperature anything like that so that's um that's what you get when you buy amg you know we are passing by muir's tournament wow look at this the forest is so yellow nowadays but okay look at the consumption 230 watt hour per kilometer despite headwind huh oh seems like this rear wheel drive is more efficient than the all wheel drive versions okay so um we still have a little bit more stretch before we go to uh Rudstugna, and then yeah then we turn around and then we get the tailwind and then this consumption should drop listen <laughs> that's how good grip you have with uh, studless winter tires on uh, dry asphalt we are back at Ionity so let's see here 218 watt hour per kilometer and distance was 181.5 so it's slight under reporting I will do all the calculations but let's plug it in for a bit how do you like that ass okay anyway here you see that they are building something uh, there's a new uh, I think this is a transformer station so I only they are adding more stalls. You see, we have six stalls here. Well, at least five operational. And you see, there's placeholder for six more. So there will be twelve stalls eventually. And also these uh, tritium chargers here, uh, they will be removed and they will be replaced by the other tall ones. I can show you. You know, at um, Helsingborg, you have the the tall ones. They are here. Is this Ionity? Yeah, it says it. So they call it I I S D. I heard. I only the stream dispenser. These are tritium chargers, but they are specific design only for Ionity. So you will not find this design in other uh, uh, charging networks. So, Mister, how many do you have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, here they are. So hopefully, in a couple of weeks, it will be up and running, and we will have way less ladder stuff. We are on the move again. Hey, what was that? What's that? Unfall! Unfall! Das Volvo is kaput! Das Volvo is kaput! Okay, we have to cruise at 94 kilometers per hour. So, um, consumption yeah, is going to stabilize. It's a bit high now, just initial peak. So, I will drive uh, all the way to Espan back again. Just a short loop to measure the consumption. So, at least we have the feature where uh, the car estimates how many percent you will arrive with. So, okay, they cheaped out on some features, but at least this one, it's included. Well, actually, I'm not sure if you have to pay extra for it or not. Mm. And by the way, uh, this one does not have heat insulated glass, then you have to pay extra for it. And also here, you know, fun fact, this sun visor here cannot extend. But if you pay extra, you can then extend the sun visor. Huh? We are back at Ionity, so uh, this time we consume 163 watt hour per kilometer. And if you compare that to the other results we had recently with EQE and EQS, we see that it could seem like the rear wheel drive 
EQE is actually a lot more uh, efficient than the older drive versions. Uh, it could be the tire, I'm not sure, but uh, really tire shouldn't make that much difference. But then also versus EQS, then at least when I did the EQS test, uh, it could seem like uh, the rear wheel drive EQS was not that much more uh, efficient than the all wheel drive EQS. But right now I'm actually not sure because uh, this EQE seems to be the most efficient uh, EQES out there so far. So, um, hmm, yeah. Uh, what should I say then? I guess if you want the most efficient uh, car in most legacy automakers, you have to get the rear wheel drive or the front wheel drive. And then in general, if you go for the all wheel drive versions, you will get a penalty in consumption. Depends how much, depending on which brand. But then Tesla is as always different because there you get the perfect, or yet the best efficiency even in all wheel drive. So, um, yeah, I remember there was almost no difference between the rear wheel drive SR Plus Model 3 and the all wheel drive long range, um, uh, yeah, uh, dual motor. So, um, how, well, I mean, why is it like that? Well, I explained before, it's because um, uh, Tesla uses a mix of uh, induction motor and uh, PM motor. Well, you know what? Yeah, and then they only use one motor at a time. Uh, I mean, one motor if not too much power is needed. But the EQS was doing that also, I remember. I saw it in display. And also the EQ, I think it was EQA, also has a mix of induction motor and a PM motor. Yeah, by the way, PM motors cannot be completely turned off. There's a little bit of drag resistant thing when you don't energize it. So just because it has a permanent magnet motor in there. So, yeah, I actually right now I'm more confused than when I started the test, but what, all we know is that this is the best result so far, despite being semi cold outside. And what I should say about the car is that, uh, okay, it's the poor man's Mercedes. If you want EQS lookalike, then you can get this one, because actually, to be honest, when I see EQE or EQS on the road, I can't really tell whether it's an EQE EQS. So that's good because if you want the EQS look, but you don't want to pay out your ass, then you can buy a, a stripped down uh, car like this, EQE, and you still have the comfort as the EQE at least, uh, similar to the EQS, but you are lacking some space because this one actually has significantly less space than the EQS. So uh, in my opinion, uh, what is the point of the EQE? Because you can, you know, those expensive EQEs I tested in the past, they are almost as expensive as EQS. If you have over 1 million nook to spend in the car, you might as well buy an EQS and you get better comfort, even better comfort, more space, and you get the real deal, right? Uh, except for, I guess, if you don't want to spend too much money and you still want the comfort, then you should go for the more stripped down version. So what I'm saying is that you either go for EQS all out, or you don't buy the expensive EQE all-wheel drive, uh, whatever. You you go for the lower trim like this one. Yeah. <laughs> does that sound? Does that make any sense? At least that what that's what I would do. Yeah. So I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.